Okay, so this, here are the granite plugs right here. So the granite plugs, there's the first ascending passage up here. And you come down and these plugs block the, the, uh, the entrance to the descending passage. Here's the descending passage right here. And so that, this passage right here, the ascending passage which comes up there, would join this over here. It would come down and, and meet in there somewhere. But people going through the descending passage would have never seen this ascending passage because it was just blocked over the same as the rest of the first ascending passage. So unless Al-Mamun Al in 820 AD had blasted this in here, we wouldn't be able, all of us now that come into the Great Pyramid, would not be able to go up to the upper passages, which are up here. So there's the first ascending passage, which has the same floor line as the Grand Gallery. We measured the angle of that. It's not exactly what people have said. You know, things get said about the Great Pyramid, about everything, and then it's passed down and handed down. And it's, I'm finding many of them, that these legends that we thought were true are not. So, you know, you gotta, I've had to make sure I study something before I just copy the past. And so, the angle of ascent, the, the slope angle that we're heading up right now, which is which is the slope angle of both the ascending passage, the descending passage, and the grand gallery, varies slightly within different parts, and varies slightly from what some of the great researchers in the past have said. So we took some measurements this trip. So I can be as big an expert as Slender's Petri, because he didn't have the electronic equipment that I have. So this is a spot where people want to take their breath. We're coming up from the first ascending passage, about to now enter one of the most wonderful rooms in the world, the Grand Gallery, 28 foot high corbeling. There's the locked door to the Queen's Chamber. I've been in there many times, but the public can't go in. so. That's the horizontal that goes to the Queen's Chamber. This is the most dangerous part of the pyramid. Right here, it's the well shaft. Uh, I asked Ashraf, the director, director general of the pyramids, if I could go down there. He said, no way. Even with the private permission, they, they don't open this up. That's locked for a reason. It goes straight down in spots, and you could drop and hurt yourself. You need to be, have mountain climber skills for part of this. But it goes down to a grotto where you can rest. You can look at these pictures somewhere else. So once you've come up the first St. Passage and you're in the Grand Gallery, then you can go up. And remember I showed you in the trial passages, there's a royal cubit ledge, two royal cubit opening, and then another royal cubit ledge. Okay, so you can either go up these stairs the Egyptian government's put in are these. And then you'll go up a ways and then you'll go to the middle. So we'll go up here. Um, you can see a, uh, a groove that goes on both sides all the way. That would have been a 14 foot high ceiling. So instead of being 28 foot high, there was periods where people thought this high ceiling was 14 feet because there was a roof across there with it. That scored line is, you can see the corbel, it's not one of the corbels, it's the scored line that's on both sides. <clears throat> okay, so let's, uh, let's continue up the uh, Grand Gallery, and then to, you could have started on either side as I showed you. Now you have to come back to the middle, come back to the middle, and now instead of climbing up on the side ledges, the government has you climb up the middle. These boxes here store. Uh, scan pyramid equipment. Normally, that's not part of the original construction. It looks like about the size of a coffer, doesn't it? So on both sides, they, you know, they have those things. That those are storage boxes. Okay, so now we're beginning the ascent of the Grand Gallery, where you go up the middle. Again, the first part, you go either, uh, you know, on the uh, east side or the west side, but then you come to the middle. Uh, these. 
points are interesting. There's these uh, sockets all along the way. Let's see, am I showing you these sockets all along the way? What I'm pointing out as I'm ascending the Grand Gallery here is that there's a set of inset stones on both the east and the west wall of the Grand Gallery. The east is on my left, the east wall, the west wall is on my right. And so uh, they're all the ones that are on the, uh, the east wall, which is to my left, are in a vertical position, like straight up and down, except for one. And all the ones that are on the west, that is to say my right, except for one, are slanted. So it's the 26th set on the left side that's vertical, and it's the 13th set on the right side that's slanted. So uh, I just was trying to point that out, but I, I did a voiceover because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired getting up, you know, higher up on the pyramid, so I tried to save you from a little panting and stuff. I hear some people coming. I want to get up to the gallery. So yeah, I'll have to see you get a little bit rusty here. Um, there's so many things that I'm not talking about as we, as we go by here. They took my camera. They don't often do that for me. The guard, I didn't know the guard. You, you can, the, the Egyptian government passed the law in August that in any monument or pyramid in Egypt, you can use a, a phone camera. So don't, if some of the old fashioned guys who don't know the law tell you to put your camera away, you can just say with strength, no, I'm keeping my phone out. The cameras, that's a crap shoot with these guys. So, in the corner there, can't see it in this lighting, is the uh, forced entry up into the relieving chambers. That's where people go when they study the graffiti that's up there. They put a big ladder up in here. All right, so um, here we're standing at the point of victory. I'm on flat ground. We have stepped up the one meter high great step. So you follow this 26 degree slope, but then you get here. And if you keep following it, you just are stopped dead. Be like one of those robot vacuums, you would just stop and spin right there. You have to step up. So symbolically, step up. Step up. You can rest now. So I've stepped up. I can catch my breath. But now you're going to have to humble yourself again if you want to go in there because you're going to have to crawl down. So we go into the first antechamber. I'm crawling down now. Here inside here is an interesting, interesting thing that people don't talk about that's screened off. And it's a tunnel that goes behind the whole room there. We can talk about this later, but this is a mysterious locked grate that seems to have been possibly dug in after the original construction. It goes behind the whole chamber here. But so now we're in the, this first Santa chamber. Now notice, people often go by this, they don't realize you can stand up here. There's a place before you get in. I just stand up and look at this. Down below me, Whoops, <laughs> I missed it myself. So there's this little space you can stand up here. Now look at this. On this side, you have limestone. Most of the pyramid's built with limestone. But when you now, you've humbled yourself to enter the king's chamber, it's granite. That's the gold. Flesh, spirit. Flesh, spirit. So now we're at this point right above it. We come up the wall and the logo the Great Pyramid is here. The rainbow. This boss is embossed about an inch high. They had to chop all of this granite out to get this here. Excuse me? Yes, yes. Go ahead, just go, go past me. Is there a uh, recording from? No, I'm, yeah, I'm taking a picture of this. You told me I could take a video with this camera. Mm -hmm. I'm recording a picture of this. Yeah, this a video, not bus. He told me I could video. Who told you? Okay, so interesting. I'm gonna just take pictures now because this guy's here, so here we go.